half show. How about it, Mom? We can make it down there in about an hour. Oh, I don't think so, honey. Well, what's the last day? There's never a last day for craft shows at Laguna. I'll find out what your father's plans are, then I'll decide. Okay. Hi. Thanks. Just for that, I'll man the toaster. Toaster? No, Mom. Under the broiler. English muffins don't work any other way. In that case, they're all yours. I'll go and see if your father's away. Oh, maybe you'd like to come. He is taking a break from work in a couple weeks. Six weeks, to be exact. Not since he started this case. I still don't understand what Dad's case is all about. Oh, well, that's simple. Dad represents a certain electronics corporation which owns a certain patent. Now, another corporation, a much larger one, is suing Dad's client be... I thought you wanted to hear about the case. I did, until you started. English muffins are more interesting than that. This time, maybe you're right. Oh, not bad for an old guy. A no, simple good morning will suffice. Let me rephrase that. Woo woo. Ah, that's much nicer. You haven't worn one of those shirts in years. No, oh, well, you know, I felt I uh, needed a present for myself the other day, and there it was. You know, I'd forgotten, you know, how, uh, how comfortable they can be. I'm becoming. Ah. Enough of these compliments. Breakfast is almost ready. Um, Nancy wants to go to Laguna. Well, that's a good idea. Have a nice day. I guess that answers my question. You're going to work today. Oh, Doug, it is Sunday. Yeah, I know, so we're not going to work in the office. We're, we're having a meeting here at 11. Here? Yeah. Well, we're close enough to a settlement now out of court that it's permissible. How many people are descending? Well, just one. My erstwhile opponent. You and Miss Webster alone? You sure that's safe? No, I couldn't stand another day locked up in that office. You know, it's, it's too bad. I mean, she's the opposing attorney. She's so uh, hard-nosed about maintaining a distance. I know, she's extraordinary, and she reminds you of me. Yeah, at her age. <sighs> yeah, she does, she does. Well, I've said that before. Yes, you have, with alarming frequency the past six weeks. Okay, it's meant as a compliment to both of you. Of course. I'm not just dying to go to Laguna. Maybe... Kate, do me a favor. Go. I mean, if I know you're sitting around in here while we're working outside, I'll just feel more guilty. Well, heaven knows I wouldn't want that on your conscience. Breakfast is waiting. Uh, be right down. called him to spare, and Buddy went to spend the day with her. She said to enjoy the muffins, though. Actually, those are only good if they're pried apart with a fork or something about cutting them. I'm uh, ready for Laguna when you are. Dad does have to work? Uh-huh. With the dragon lady? Maybe we ought to call in every half hour. Don't let him hear you call her that. Opposing counsel Annie Laurie Webster's your father's new best friend. Best friend? They've been at each other's throats for the past six weeks. I know more about her than I know about your father's former hero, Clarence Darrow. Oh, I don't mean to be snide. He's been having a grand time with this case. Hard as he's been working, it's given him a vitality and enthusiasm he hasn't had for a while. Oh, it seems Miss Webster's managed to push a few buttons that Daddy didn't know he so had. What an enchanting way to put it. I'll get my things. Decades presents A Christmas Carol. Join us as we celebrate the holiday season with episodes of Carol Burnett and Friends, The Lucy Show, and a special presentation of the very best of The Ed Sullivan Show. That was wonderful! Hosted by the groundbreaking comic, Laugh Along, <laughs> as we unwrap classic moments of her iconic comedy career as Decades presents A Christmas Carol. Christmas Day, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific, right here on Decades. Hello, Annie. Hello. Oh, yeah, let me take that. Oh, all right. <laughs> Very interesting. First you get me to meet you on your home ground, and then you offer to carry my books. Guilty. Yeah, you try and soften me up, counsel? Guilty. It won't work. Of course, I try. 
Listen, I set things up on the uh, patio. I thought maybe the uh, California sunshine would succeed where I failed. Not, not a chance. Well, listen, uh, what about the patent numbers? Irrelevant. Patent numbers are fundamental to this case. Patent numbers are fundamental to your case, such as it is. The numbers are irrelevant to mine. last night and today my mom's just sitting around looking at him her eyes are always full of tears I can't stand being there when it's like that it's my father he's seen this other woman I heard my mom telling my aunt on the telephone I can't look at either one of them now hey maybe you're just imagining it I'm not you won't tell anybody about this, will you, Tracy? I don't even know what to say to you about This is your plan. I'll set the Keystone versus Dundee precedent. Fine. You don't mind being laughed out of court. Keystone versus Dundee. Where did he come up with that? Keystone. Hello. Yep. Yeah, we're working on it. What? They're putting me on. After all this, that's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, I will. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Annie? Yes. Oh, what, are you gone crazy? That's entirely possible. This is vital information. It's not vital anymore. Matter of fact, it's uh, irrelevant. Totally. Hey, come on. Give They're me a They're planning minute. a merger. Who? What are you talking about? A merger? You've got it. Your client and my client are in the process of planning... A merger? It's not possible. They're mortal enemies. And so are we. Not our work. Whoopee. <laughs> I was getting so tired of it. Of what? Carrying my own books and being the dragon lady. Of not letting you get to me. Uh, well, I think uh, this requires a drink. I'll drink to that. The dragon lady's still here? Looks like it. Hi, Mom. Hi, it's... darling. Mom, can I have your sneak for dinner and sleep over, too? Sure, if it's all right with your mother. Wait. 
I know. <laughs> Max Welton's braids are funny. Well, then it's going to have to do. Right, George, I think she's got it. And she was there that day. Yeah, we should have called in every half hour. Give me a promise. Hi, Dolly. True. We're home. Kate. You'll never guess what happened. I won't? Try me. Wednesday, Decades remembers the remarkable year. Morning. Good morning. Are well, you find the food more interesting here than at home, Audrey? I slept over. I've been here since yesterday afternoon. You have? Where have you been keeping yourself? I don't remember seeing you around. I sure remember seeing you. Uh, Doug, eggs? Uh, no, uh, coffee and toast. Well, you must have a Whopper, buddy. A Whopper? What? A hang -o A headache. No, I don't have a headache. As a matter of fact, I feel just dandy. Kate, I think I will have uh, some eggs after all. Sunny side up? <laughs> no, scrambled. Uh, well done, please. Come on, buddy. We're going to be late for school. Let's get our things. Goodbye, Tom. Bye, Dad. Bye, honey. Bye, Audrey. Bye, Mrs. Lawrence. Oh, hold the eggs. Too late, too late. Oh, it's a fit punishment, I suppose. What is with Audrey? You know, she was downright rude. Something's troubling her. I think she was thrown a little by your uh, singing debut yesterday. I had no idea I had such a large audience. Uh, I'm sorry, honey. Uh, really. For the last time, let me say there's nothing to be sorry about. After all those weeks of work, suddenly find out about the merger? Of course, you got to let off a little steam. I guess she did, too. I had no idea she was so young and attractive. I thought I told you. She thinks you're cute, too. Kate. Oh, Kate. If you make these disappear, I'll take you to dinner tonight, the restaurant of your choice. It's a deal. Kitty. I don't care if you get ten late marks. We're not leaving this house until you tell me what you meant by the last remark. What remark? Which one? Audrey, you said to me that I should be able to understand the way you feel about your father because my father is doing the same thing. Now, what do you mean? Oh, okay. Fine. Goodbye. Goodbye forever. Goodbye, former best friend. I'm sorry. I didn't mean anything. It's just the woman my father's seen, he met her at work, just like your father and that woman who was playing the piano. Take it back, Audrey. Take it back. I'm sorry. I said I didn't mean it. But you have to admit, they look pretty happy standing there. You don't have to be so know-it-all, buddy. Anything can happen, whether you think so or not. Not in this family.
Yes? Good morning. Ah, uh, no, don't get up. If you feel anything like I do, you'll never make it. I knew you'd understand. Um, how was it? Um, I mean, uh, was it okay after I left? Okay, oh, yes, sure, of course. I mean, Kate understood perfectly. Lucky you, lucky me. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be on her wrong side, you know. It's amazing, you know. I mean, you're very much like her. You'd like each other. You want to work? Oh, it's impossible. Your client's uh, materials haven't arrived yet. Oh. Oh, well, maybe they'll be on a late plane, huh? Probably. Counselor? Now that we're on the same team, so to speak, don't you think it's time that you told me uh, the office secret? Secret? Yeah, the locked door at the end of the corridor, the one uh, next to the conference room. You know, every time I walk by it, I try the handle and it's a... Uh... Door won't open. Yeah, exactly. Come on. What's behind it? I don't know you well enough. And there's a solution to that. It's time that we get to know each other better. All right. Where do we start? We could begin by playing hooky. What do you say? Next time, I'll stay away longer. Obviously, a weekend doesn't need to make a dent. Sorry. I missed you. Don't bother. Don't bother. It's only Audrey. It's only Audrey? I thought she was your best friend. She was. How oh, was your weekend? It was okay. It was nothing special. Did I miss anything good around here? Dad and the uh, dragon lady meet up. Oh, the lawyer. Uh, Annie Laurie Webster. The clients made up, so they did, too. Audrey and I walked in. They were sitting at the piano, drinking martinis and singing. Mm, sounds like I did miss something. According to Audrey, you missed Dad and the other woman. Well, how did she manage to come up with that? They did look pretty comfortable sitting there. This part's a secret. You can trust me. Audrey's dad is seeing another woman. And Audrey seems to think it's because they work together. So I just automatically thought that... No. Dad... No, 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 no way, buddy. Well, that's what I told Audrey. But she kept going on and on about it over and over a thousand times until I got fed up. But she got to you somehow anyway. No way. Maybe a little. Maybe. Did you tell Mom about the singing? I didn't have to. She was standing right there. She probably thought it was pretty hilarious. At least I think she did. Well, then you should think that, too. Excuse me, is Miss Beach here? She's sick. I'm the temporary. Oh, I'm Kate Lawrence. Mr. Lawrence, the lawyer, is my husband. Well, he's not here. I thought I'd ask him to buy me a cup of coffee. Did he say when he'd be back? No. When they left, the lady said if anyone asked to say Mr. Lawrence was going to play hockey. Hockey? Yes, well, thank you. Uh, don't bother saying I was here. The lady's name was Miss Webster, if that's any help. None at all. Thank you. Goodbye. 
Come on. Admit it. Now, that was a funny joke. No, it wasn't. Yes. It is not funny, <laughs> Counselor. Okay, it's my turn. Yeah. Why do you feed a 300-pound canary? What? <laughs> oh, you heard me. No. Why do you feed a 300-pound canary? Anything you want. <laughs> you knew it. <laughs> it's my favorite joke in the whole world. Mine, too. It is? Mm. Well, then, I think we... <laughs> what? I think we know each other well enough. I think the people who have the same favorite joke know each other well enough to tell all. So? Come on, tell. What? Secret. It's behind the door in your office. It's ridiculous. I certainly hope so. A pool table. That is ridiculous. Well, the founder of our firm felt that a couple of hours of every working day should be spent uh, relaxing. And he was a pool shark. And like in gothic novels, the room has never been used since. The secret is safe with me. You know, I consider myself an expert on parks, and this is one of the nicest. It's fair. Fair? Sure. Quick, quick. Name five that are better. Okay. Central. Bronx, Washington Square. You New Yorkers, you never give up, do you? No. No matter how many muggings there are. You're a Californian, huh? Born and bred. I bet you wanted to be Clark Abel when you grew up. No, not quite. First 10 years, I wanted to be Babe Ruth. Then Clark Abel. Who did you want to be? Minnesota Fats. That's who I wanted to be when I grew up. Could have been, too. Well, what stopped you? I decided that following in my father's footsteps was too easy. Got me through law school, though. You know, it's incredible. We've been working together for six weeks, and we've hardly gotten to know each other till today. I haven't been here six weeks. So. I've only been here since yesterday. You are formidable. Speak the truth, Counselor. Not formidable. Mean. A little mean. Yes. It's six o'clock, Mr. Douglas. I'm leaving. Uh, Lawrence. Oh, Lawrence. Oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, Miss Speech will be back tomorrow, so I won't be. Well, good night. Right? It certainly is nice in here. Well, you, you, uh, you certainly filled in wonderfully. I mean, you really held the fort. Did I? You were a lifesaver. Oh, thank you. Well, good night. Night. You're not, though. What? Mean. Not a mean bone in your body, Mr. Douglas. Uh. In fact, you're the kindest man I've ever met. You're funny, too. That's very important, you know. And you're very attractive. Flattery will get you everywhere. I hope so. Wait a minute. This conversation... It's not a conversation. This is a proposition. Annie. I'm a middle-aged man. I mean, we're very susceptible. Good. Because the truth is, I think I'm falling in love with you. I'm sorry, buddy. I just can't help you. What do you mean? You've been doing my homework for years. This is no time to build up conscience. It's not that. It's... I just don't get it. I mean, you got null sets, you got universal sets. It sounds more like a tennis match than math. Hi, Dad. Hey, Dad, maybe you can help me since Dumbo doesn't know what he's doing. I have a big test tomorrow, and I'd really like to pass it. Buddy, if it's not too much trouble, would you give me a minute to catch my breath? Oh, buddy. Oh. 
Hello. Oh. Guess you heard I'm a little grouchy. Should I keep my distance? No, I wish you'd make me a drink instead. Good evening, Kate. Now, what are you doing? Stealing the silver. You caught me. Dinner will be ready in 15 minutes. I told you this morning I was going to take you out to dinner. So you did. When I didn't hear from you all day, I figured it was off. Sorry, I forgot to call. I didn't have five minutes. Of course, playing hockey can really keep a person on the move. Playing hockey? I stopped at your office. Your temporary secretary told me you were playing hockey. I presume she meant hooky. That isn't like you, Kate. That's what I thought about you, and lying. All right. All right, let's start over. I'm sorry if I was a little edgy. A little? The materials for the merger hadn't arrived, so rather than sit around the office all day staring at each other, Annie and I... Played hooky. What's so terrible about that? Nothing. Therefore, I don't know why you didn't just say so in the first place. I'm a human being. I made a mistake. I'm not perfect. You're telling me and everybody else around here tonight. What's bothering you, Kate? Bothering me. You took out after Buddy the minute you came in. It was mean. You hurt her feelings. Willie managed to hold his own. He usually does. If you're feeling guilty about having a good time today, I wish you'd knock it off. Why should I feel guilty? I had a terrific time. For the first time in years, I left the office in the middle of the day, and I went out and I enjoyed myself. I took a walk in the park. I ate a hot dog. I think you mean you and Annie Laurie took a walk in the park, and you and Annie Laurie had hot dogs. All right, we did. What about it? Exactly. What about it? Nothing. I think there's something. Stop it, Kate. I didn't start it. I don't know what there is, but I do know there is something. There isn't. Then why did you come home the way you did, snapping at everybody, trying to put as much distance between us as you possibly could? Distance? I think that's what's been happening. I wish you'd cut it out before the distance gets any greater. Dad, I couldn't find any lemon, but, Dad. He had to go right out again. Business. Mom, my intuition told me that you could use this. Thank you, Willie. And thank your intuition for me, too. How about going to a movie tonight after dinner? Uh, no thanks, honey. Oh, come on. It's good for what ails you. Willie, everything's all right. Get Nancy, buddy. Dinner's ready. We had a dog. Buddy hardly ate a thing. Put it in the fridge. Maybe she'll be hungry later. She did the same thing with yours? Nancy, just because I wasn't hungry tonight, don't make a federal case out of it. Okay. Okay. I'm all right, really. Good. But how about a movie? Really? Nancy wants to go to the movies. Have a good time. She's incredible. You know, she really is all right. Oh, that's all you know. Come on, let's go lose ourselves in Star Wars again. It's my treat. We're not doing anybody any good around here. Okay, let's go.
Hello, mister. Can I interest you in a game of chance? I didn't know you'd be here, honest. I didn't know it myself. How come, then? Restless. Why don't you go to a movie? I hate movies. Alone. What about you? Me, too. I hate movies alone. I hate sitting alone in dark theaters all by myself. I didn't mean that. Why are you here? Because I don't like being in a hotel room all by myself. I didn't mean that. That's not what I meant. I didn't mean it the way it sounded. Annie? It was very unfair to you today, Doug. It was very unfair of me to hope that you would fall in love with me, too. There's no reason for you, too. There's as much reason for me. No, there's reason why you might want to make love to me. But that's a very different thing, and we both know it. That's all right with me, you know. I'm not so sure it should be. Maybe not. But I'm smart enough to know that wanting you to fall in love with me is asking too much. Why me at all, then, Annie? Because a good man is hard to find, Doug. Especially for a woman like me. I'm in there all day long, slugging it out with the guys. I've learned to put myself aside, you see, from nine to five every day. You may think you do that. I know that's what I do. At the end of the day, I get a smart slap on the back from the guys. See you tomorrow. Annie? Almost no one in my life has seen through me the way you have. Almost no one has been so sweet, gentle, so polite and respectful as you've been. I'd be crazy not to be in love with you. I'd be crazy not to want you. All right, say it's fine. But tonight, what happens tomorrow, the next day? We work on the merger. And then, when we can, if you can, we go to my hotel. In two weeks, the work will be over, and I'll go back to New York and resume my life. And remember you dearly. And hope you will me. You make it sound so simple. If things are understood from the beginning, they are simple. I think we've talked about it enough. I think you're right. doing lying here in the dark? Thinking. What's wrong with your room? <sighs> it's my old trick. Whenever I have something on my mind, I come in here, hoping that you'll walk in and we can talk. Here I am. Let me level with you. I heard you and Dad down in the kitchen before he left. I'm sorry to hear it. It was an accident. I was coming down to... Is it serious? Do you mean his daddy coming home? Yes. It's the same all over, isn't it? What's the same? Audrey's dad. He has another woman. And her mom's a wreck about it, too. It is not at all the same, and I am not a wreck. What's happening with Audrey's parents has nothing to do with us. They've been married almost as long as you and Dad have. What do you think that means, being married? I don't know. I guess it means when they say the part, do you love, promise to love, honor, and whatever, for as long as you live. People publicly commit themselves to each other with those words. But they're only words. 
if it's not an even deeper commitment, I don't think a marriage stands a chance. Do you and Dad have that? Yes. Things may come between us. They have before. I suppose they may again. It's not the same kind of thing as what's torturing Audrey's parents. What we try hard to do is to respect each other, to respect ourselves. Is that true? Don't you think it is? It didn't sound like that. Trying isn't always succeeding. The quarrel tonight was mostly my fault. I forgot something very important. I forgot that when the person you're committed to, the one you love, is troubled about something, you're supposed to try and help them through it, whether it's easy or not. How come you forgot? I got frightened. It happens. If I thought about it a little longer, you and I wouldn't be having this conversation, and uh, I wouldn't be starving. Funny. All of a sudden, I am, too. Anybody for pizza? Let's go. Do me a favor. I'll go. You stay in case your father calls. Mm-hmm. story about the woman who comes back to her hotel and her room is missing? <laughs> they, I think they made a movie out of it. I think uh, Gene Simmons was in it. Mm. Oh, oh, what a time to pick to clean. I don't think there's room in there for the three of us. I'll be out in a minute, lady. It's like a bad joke. A well timed. I can say goodnight to you out here. That's really not funny. When did you change your mind? In the car. I thought about it. Huh. One of the things I hate about California is the car. All that driving. All that time to think. In New York, things are coming at you from all over the place. Just trying to make it from the east side to the west side keeps you so busy. I thought my case was pretty convincing. Oh, it was. It is. It's just not for me. I mean, the last 24 hours have been wonderful. I felt young and flattered. Renewed for making me feel all those things. For wanting me, I thank you very much. But if the qualities you talked about, uh, what you want from me, we're both going to be disappointed. They're already spoken for. They belong to Kate and the children. The way they feel about me is too important to me for me to treat it disrespectfully. It's all ready. Excuse me.
glad he told me you'd be here. I mean, it's not too late. We can still go to dinner if you want to. Oh, Doug. I'm sorry, honey. How are you? Well, I'm fine. Are you? Yes. I was pretty rough on you. I got sore. Right can be rough. I got sore and I got scared. Guess I thought I might lose you. No cause for alarm. Absolutely none. I know. Took me a while to remember that. But I did. Me too. At a time like this? We were both starving. Well, when Mom gets in, we've got to try me up, you know, and let her know we understand. And... Mom, are you all right? Oh, fine, darling. That's okay, because we're all here. Oh, good, because I'm starving. I'll get the plates. She's got to let us help her. Nancy, slow down. Dad. Hi. Hi. Well... I'm for bed. Good night. I'm feeling a little weary myself. Uh, you don't have to hold down the fort anymore, Nancy. The army has arrived. Good night. Sweet dreams. Mom? I'm going to take this upstairs. I'm going to call Audrey. Oh, it's pretty late, honey. I know. But I have to tell her good night. She needs a little help from her friends these days. Night. Good night. Night. Here we are, alone at last. I thought they'd never leave. Somebody meet somebody coming through the ride. If a body gets a body, need a body cry. American.